Let's talk rear bumpers. Been a while since I did a video on this thing. Today I want to talk about rear bumpers uh, and the options that you have for your Jeep Cherokee. There's plenty, plenty of different designs, different materials. You could do two bumpers, you could do plate bumpers, you could do tire swing outs, you can do tire swing downs, mount a hitch on it, mount your swing out on a hitch. Tons of options. You can spend anywhere from about 300 bucks if you got a welder and a grinder, you could build your own. Or $1,400 for a JCR rear bumper. I've been looking at different designs online, seeing a lot of people's ideas, and I'm not really seeing anything that I like, like 100%. I've seen a couple that are good, but they got the tire carrier on the wrong side of the Jeep, if you ask me. We'll get into that in a little bit. So, I guess we're just gonna have to build our own, right? There's a lot of things that I want this bumper to actually accomplish. The main reason is to get my spare tire on the Jeep. Since I've put the 32s on the Jeep, I have not been carrying my spare tire and that is a huge gamble on my part. So I need to add that. So here's some criteria that I want from this bumper. I want it to match the quarter panels down here. I want it to kind of line up with this quarter panel, you know, what's left of my quarter panel. Um, so it's kind of flush with the end of it and just overall fill up this area. This corner right here is where the pivot for the tire carrier is gonna be. I've seen a lot of designs that use a trailer axle spindle with tapered bearings on the top and bottom. That design to me is Pretty good. It definitely could be better in the fact that once you weld that spindle to your bumper, you're pretty much stuck with any angle that it's sitting at. That spindle can carry a lot of weight, probably more than I'll ever put on this tire carrier. But I think what I'm gonna do is a double shear design that I can kind of put on here and have a little bit of adjustment. If you've seen some of my other videos, then you know that I built D-ring mounts for the rear. And the intention of these D-ring mounts was to eventually build a bumper around them and rear tire carrier. In that same video, you see me mount this stock bumper on the back just to kind of have a bumper so I don't get pulled over when I drive this thing on the street. This is just a factory front bumper that I've put on the back and actually flipped over cut some holes for these D-ring mounts. So I'm legal this way. These D-ring mounts go into the frame about 14 inches and I got about, I've got nine bolts holding just one of these D-ring mounts on. I'll leave a link to that video up here. But basically I made those to be a foundation for a rear bumper tire carrier setup. I want to do a tire carrier that swings out from the left side of the Jeep or the driver's side. One reason for that is to keep most of my visibility behind the rear window. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, here we are in the Jeep and I've got that spare tire mounted up in the back, just sitting on a trash can. But this is what it would look like in my blind spot with that tire right in the center. So you get a little bit of visibility, you know, right here. But my thought is I need more visibility to the right than I do the left. If I'm checking my blind spot on the left side, you know, I'm leaning over the back here, actually looking out this side window. The whole reason why I bought a two-door Cherokee was the visibility. I'm a bigger guy. I mean, there's no two ways around that. So having the B pillar past my shoulder gives me a little bit more visibility, as well as this huge window over my shoulder. Now I'm gonna move that tire to the driver's side and we can see kind of how much visibility I'd actually gain. There. All right, we got it moved over to the driver's side, probably about six inches or so. 
and that area is just a little bit bigger. Probably not that much to fuss about, but to me, it just makes sense to offset it to the left side. So I think we're gonna design the bumper to where it moves that tire to the left side and uh, try and keep that tire carrier pretty short. Maybe it'll relieve some of the stress on the hinge. There's three things that I want this tire carrier to actually carry is number one, my spare tire. Second thing that I want it to carry is my high lift jack. I haven't been carrying that either. It seems kind of a waste to just have it in my garage, so we're gonna put it on this tire carrier. And the third thing I want on there is I wanna mount my CB antenna to it. Since I put the new lift gate on, because you know, the last one I smashed the back window, I haven't re-ran that CB cable in through the hatch because I knew that eventually I was gonna put it on the rear bumper slash tire carrier. So I have to build a mount for that. I also want to add high lift jacking points to the actual bumper. It'll kind of be in this area down here. Um, and then very last thing is I want to have a two inch receiver. I don't know if I'd ever tow anything with this thing, but the main thing I want to use that two inch receiver for is another recovery point and also be able to run a stinger out the back to kind of carry the back end of the Jeep over some rocks instead of just pounding the tire carrier and tire. The tire carrier will have just your standard double locking latch, kind of similar to what you'd have on your doors. I found a pretty cheap one on Amazon and I think it'll work. It's for like some kind of military truck. I'll leave a link to everything I'm gonna use down in the description. These are Amazon affiliate links and I am an Amazon affiliate, so Anything you buy through those links or on those links, I earned a very, very little small commission. No extra charge to you. The latch will just have just a regular handle that you can pull or push. I can't remember which way it's gonna go, but to unlatch it and we'll be able to swing the tire out. The tire carrier will actually rotate past 90 degrees so I can get the hatch open fully. The tire carrier will have a locking pin so that way it can't rotate past where I want it to in case, you know, I'm parked on a side hill or something. So yeah, let me show you what I've got planned. Let's start with the constraints that I worked in. So we'll turn the bumper off. So this is what the back of the Jeep looks like right now. Obviously without the stock bumper. <clears throat> so you've got your hatch, you got your tail lights, and you got our D-ring mounts. So this is all done to scale, kind of picking up the uh, back of the Jeep. Uh, one thing you don't see is the uh, end cap uh, sketch here. This is the angles at which the quarter panel kind of lines up with. So I'm using this component here as kind of the constraint layer. Basically from this, I can build off of what the bumper will actually look like. So this is the bumper. This is just going to be a plate style bumper, similar to what my front one was, maybe a little bit nicer because I'm doing this on the CNC plaza table. And also I can, model it up inside Fusion. This is kind of where we're picking up the quarter panel. Those three angles will line up right with the quarter panel of the Jeep. These four holes are actually for the lower part of the hinge. And then the upper part of the hinge will actually be up between the tail light and the uh, bumper itself. The top will actually end up being welded to the bumper and the lower I'll be able to kind of adjust as need be. I don't plan on having a lot of adjustment at the hinge because I don't really think I need a lot but the very little that this lower hinge uh, will actually provide enough adjustment for what I think it's needed. Um, so you can see here I've picked up the tabs from uh, the D-ring mounts. Those will protrude through. Shouldn't have to do any modifications to these at all. 
other than the fact that I'm going to end up putting a flange to bolt this bumper onto. So I'll sandwich two pieces of uh, 3 16 plate onto the 2x3 tubing that I've got, and then I'll just kind of tack it there and then just run a sawzall down this line and that should give me a pretty good mount for the, for the bumper. We got a cutout here for the latch for the tire carrier and then a cutout for the hitch. This is pretty much the finished product. I might change a few things like I might eventually add Eventually down the road, I'd like to add some backup lights to this rear bumper. And uh, that's what this hole will end up being. Uh, this should fit a 3-inch cube, flush-mounted cube light. Um, nothing special. But that's, uh, that's for a later date. We won't add that hole until later. I can cut that out by hand. Modeled up the hitch. It's going to protrude out a little bit, not too much. The hitch will kind of be sunken into the bumper like you normally see on a on an off-road bumper because I don't want it to actually get in the way of any kind of rocks. I mean, it's it's going to catch where it is right now, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. And then I've added this kind of reinforcement plate to the back just in case I decide to tow anything with this. And it probably won't be anything more than like a bike rack or something. So this is what the whole rear bumper and tire carrier will look like. You've got the bumper here. you got the tire carrier. got the mounting flange for the wheel. I want to make this somewhat adjustable because eventually I do plan on running bigger tires on this Jeep. Um, so 32 inch tall tire. It'll use these three holes right here. And then it, it'll be adjustable all the way up to a 42-inch tall tire. I don't plan on ever running tires that big, but it'll at least give me the option. And you'll notice that this flange has got more than just your standard three holes. I have this laid out to where a 4.5-inch lug spacing, a 5.5-inch lug spacing, and then a 6.5-inch lug spacing. So that should cover the majority of any kind of axles I would ever add to this Jeep. Focusing down here on the hinge, you've got the one inch bolt. Uh, it's, I'm going to end up using a one inch uh, grade eight fine thread bolt with a nylon locking nut. Um, this will just be a two inch uh, diameter slug that I'll machine out for the bolt and then if you see these gold pieces right here, these are actually flanged oil light bearings. I was going to do a whole seal bearing and everything, but I don't honestly think I'll need them because A, the weight, and B, how often I'm going to be swinging this thing open. I don't think it really warrants having, you know, full roller bearings on the top and the bottom. But we'll see. The nice thing about this design is if I don't like this bolt, I can just recut this bracket down here and then weld a, the standard trailer axle spindle to, the, to this plate and run, you know, your tapered roller bearings. So I'll have a locking pin also. I'm sure you guys have seen these around most bumpers. That will engage a plate in here with another corresponding hole. That'll get welded to this 2-inch slug. And that'll keep the uh, tire carrier for whatever reason. If, if it decides to swing out and I'm parked on the side of a hill, uh, that pin will keep it from you know swinging all the way around and hitting the side of the Jeep. And the last thing is this latch. It'll bolt to the bottom of this 2x3 rectangular tube and it'll have a slot to where the actual latch mechanism can come and protrude through and we'll put a cool guy handle on the end of it. 
All right, guys, so that's the plan. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.